Hello, I am Mark Silver. I am an author and educator here in Carmel, California, just a stone's throw from where two amazing photographers lived, Ansel Adams and Edward Weston. And this show is brought to you by our good friends at, at Bay Photo Lab. Now, here's the deal. If you ever heard, heard me talk about it, which is often, I'm always recommending that you guys make prints and hang them on the wall or put them somewhere and Bay Photo Lab will help you. You can get a collage wall. I'm not even sure what that is, but I guess it's uh, these photographs all kind of working together as a collage, 15% off there. That looks pretty cool. Exposer is what I've got behind me here. This is an exposer. Those are actually, you know, photographs here put on, and this is my logo, and that's printed by Bay Photo Lab. And what's cool about it is you can switch those out if you want. You can have one frame and put different photographs in it. Bob Holmes loves those. I think they're awesome. 30% off on exposers. And as always, you're going to get 25% off on your first order. So do what some of the biggest names in photography do. Bob Holmes, Scott Kelby, Bambi Cantrell, to name just a couple here. Order your prints from Bay Photo Lab. They will totally help you out. Okay. We are continuing our series on the decoding of photography. Do you guys ever felt confused about photography? Come on. Look at all these camera choices here. <laughs> How about that? How many thousands of cameras are lying there? And, you know, that's just one person's collection. Just kidding. Then how about all the millions of books that you could be reading? And what about all the lens choices? That can get all really confusing. I've been confused. So if I've been confused, I'm not saying I'm the greatest expert. I just have put a lot of time into studying photography. And if it seems confusing to me, I bet it's confusing to you. And what if you had a way, just like this girl has, of decoding, this is her magic decoder ring, decoding this world of photography that has a lot of confusing twists and turns and what lens should I use? Should I use this kind of lighting? Should I use that kind of lighting? How do I set my camera? All right, so let's get into what this decoder ring is all about. There is, and this is in this book, a cycle of photography. A cycle is something that has a beginning, middle, and an end. The sun comes up, midday, it's overhead, it sets, the sun goes down. That's a cycle. And we go through that every day, 24 hours. We have lots of cycles in our life. And photography, if you think about it, it has an exact cycle that you follow. And it took me a long time to figure this out, you guys. This wasn't a finger snap. This wasn't something that happened in, in 10 minutes. This took many interviews and many changes. At first, I thought there were four steps to the cycle. Then I realized there's actually five. Visualization, which is going to be the topic of our show today, getting in, getting in your mind's eye before you press the shutter. So let's jump in here. First of all, there is a secret. The whole key to a photograph is what? What do you think? A very famous photographer said, his name is Ansel Adams. He said the whole key to a photograph is, I'm not going to reveal it. We'll go to that in a minute. But there's a false belief that photography starts with cameras and confusing knobs and menus. And I'm going to tell you that's point number two, that's equipment. So that's like trying to get into a house by climbing into the second story window. You can do it, but you may fall on your butt and it's not an easy way to get in the front door, is it? So wouldn't it be a lot easier to enter the front door through the front door? And it doesn't involve a camera. It involves you and your mind and your ability to see an image visualization. Now, before we dive into this, Jared put a poll up on YouTube, which many of you might have answered. And here was the poll. Jared, go over the results here. Yeah. So we just wanted to know 
how well you feel you understand visualization and are comfortable with it. And our top result, which 16% of people said were, I am comfortable with and feel I understand visualization. Then you've got about 40% of people that say they feel they understand visualization, but they're still working on using it. Another 32 that said, I don't feel I understand visualization yet. And then 13% of people who said they're just not familiar with it. So only uh, what about 15, 16% of people feel confident and comfortable with the idea of visualization, it seems. We better help you out with that. Okay, so what is visualization? You see me, this is a simulated enactment, really. There's the photograph I wanted to take. I saw it, I, you know, I visualized it. I'm using my hands. That often helps you, by the way, because it's a frame. Because you, you can't think in terms of the world. Your vision is like enormously takes in all sorts of stuff, right? And you have a super wide angle lens here. I mean, I can see stuff all the way back here. But a camera, you're, we're dealing with a frame, which is either, usually it's a rectangle, sometimes it's square, but that's where you have to envision what's gonna fit into, into that frame there. So what does this mean, visualization? I love this quote, visualize this thing that you want, see it, feel it, believe in it. <laughs> Make your mental blueprint and begin to build. And that wasn't written specifically about photography because visualization fits any creative activity, any creative activity. In fact, it fits every activity. In sports, you've, you've heard of athletes visualizing. You, we saw the Winter Olympics and many of these great skiers, for instance, would visualize the course before they started out on it. They knew where they, you know, maybe it was icy there or it was a little flatter over there. And they had to, they already had visualized before they even started their run. Golfers do this. They have to visualize when they swing that club, it, they want it ideally to end up not just on the green, but in the hole. And that's a visualization process. So you can use this in every part of your life, but for sure in photography. And visualization guides the entire cycle of photography. It is defined in the Oxford Dictionary as the action or fact of visualizing the power or process of forming a mental picture or vision of something not actually present to the site. And it's a picture thus formed. I gave you the example of the skier visualizing she actually hasn't gone down and seen that bump yet she's way up here somewhere but she's visualized it because she's run the course before in your photography you're getting an idea before you even pick up a camera of what it is you want to photograph now i want to just dispel the idea that this somehow slows you down or it's it's too thought provoking a process listen if your snapshots, if you're taking snapshots, it's done without any thought. That's what a snapshot is. You're just pressing the shutter. Cha -ching, cha -ching, cha -ching. You are not even thinking necessarily about where would be the best place to photograph that day. You're just walking down the street. Okay. Cha -ch 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 -ch. Very little control over the photograph. Ansel Adams said the whole key to a photograph is visualization. And that is the difference between Photography is an art form and a snapshot. I don't care how long that visualization process takes or if you did it two hours or a month or a year ahead of time, there's always a visualization process that goes along with your photography, always. Even if you say, I'm gonna go out today and photograph on the main street of my town or in Yosemite, you're getting a quick, visualization right there. Now, if you can expand on that and really explore it, your photography will get better and better and better. And by the way, that can happen in a split second. And it's often happened to me. I look and I go, wow, if I stood over there, this photograph is going to be a thousand times better. And then I make my way over to that spot. Bam, that was a visualization that completely changed where I was going to photograph and how I was going to photograph 
maybe I thought, you know, I better just get down low here. That's a visualization. I'm using my mind to direct the shot and the camera and everything else. Okay. You got to strengthen that. And the when you visualize a shot, one of the things you want to do, and Chase Jarvis said this, is walk around the scene without a camera pressed to your face. Because as soon as you get a camera pressed to your face, you're into the second stage. So don't go there yet. Don't go there yet. Just walk around. Get an idea of what things look like. Where could the photograph be? My son um, was working in a, a startup, and Annie Leibowitz came to photograph the startup. And he said, you know, it's interesting to see that she walked around with no camera for 15, 20, 30 minutes just to get an idea where the shots were before she she has assistance to a company or before anybody pulled out a camera or a tripod or whatever she was using, lights. She just gathered information about the shoot and was getting an idea. That's one step of visualization. Then you start to build it. You build the scene. Ah, yes. You know, this would look way better at sunset or way better, you know, first light. Or rarely, it would look way better in the middle of the day. Sometimes maybe you want some really harsh shadows. But whatever it is, you start to build the scene. And then you visualize it all the way through post. When you get into your processing, you're still carrying along your vision. Or I know that I want this to be a black and white photograph. Well, I don't change any settings in my camera. I am going to do that only in post, but I'm visualizing it as a black and white photograph. So those are examples of visualization. I hope that... Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.